Hey, hi everybody, welcome back. I'm happy that you're watching this. So we're going to talk about section 4.4, changing the planet. And it starts on page 58 in your textbook. Now, please get your notebook ready and make some notes. I'm going to talk about this lesson. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a summary that you can write in your notebook. So at the end of the video, you can pause it and copy the notes. So for now, just listen if you can understand the explanation. So it's called changing the planet and it might as well be called trashing the planet because this part is about what humans do to trash the planet and what we should stop doing. So it's important to know. All right, let's dive in. First thing is you need to know something about the Earth's atmosphere. What is the Earth's atmosphere? Well, it is a layer of air around the Earth. You can see it right here. You can see this layer above the Earth. And this layer has lots of little sub-layers in it. The closest part of it that is really close to us is the troposphere, and that extends really high up until about 10 kilometers, and that is uh, where planes fly, where the clouds are, and then there's the stratosphere, and in between the stratosphere and the troposphere, there's this ozone layer. Maybe you've heard about it. We'll talk about it in this lesson. Then there's the mesosphere. Um, the mesosphere is uh, very beautiful because you can see the northern lights, those beautiful lights in the air that you can see up north. Uh, then there's a thermosphere where you can find the satellites and exosphere where rockets fly to the moon and so forth. Anyway, what about this atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere is very, very helpful for life on Earth because of the following reasons. First of all, it allows us to breathe. Then it lets plants make food because in this layer there's carbon dioxide and that is something that plants breathe in uh, to make sugars and food and to make oxygen for, amongst other people and creatures, us. Okay, also the atmosphere keeps the Earth warm. Without the atmosphere, we would have an ice planet. No life would exist on Earth. It also shields us from harmful radiation, and that in Dutch is uh, gevaarlijke straling. Now, the problem with this atmosphere is that humans have damaged it with all kinds of activities and we should stop doing that let's see what happened well first of all you need to know about one type of very harmful radiation and that is called ultraviolet radiation ultraviolet radiation is really nice because it tans your skin but on the other hand it can also cause skin cancer and you might have heard about that because when you're in the sun you need to cover your eyes with sunglasses and you need to get some sun tanning lotion to protect you against skin cancer. It can also harm other life on Earth, like plants and animals. What is the ultraviolet light? Well, normally there's all kinds of radiation everywhere. Most of this is just normal light. The light that causes you and I to see colors. That's okay. There's no danger there. Then there's infrared light. Now, infrared is something that you use in the remote controls of your TV, and that's also not dangerous. But then there's ultraviolet radiation, and that has lots of energy, and that's not good, because it can get deep into your skin and cause skin cancer. Well, what does this have to do with changing the planet? Well, in order to understand that, we need to know about something called ozone, and I just talked about it a minute ago when I talked about the atmosphere. Now, what is ozone? Ozone is one of the gases in that upper part of the atmosphere. We call it the ozone layer. And what it does, this ozone protects us from harmful ultraviolet radiation. So we really need that ozone layer. Remember, ozone layer is wonderful. It protects us against ultraviolet light, and ultraviolet radiation can cause plants to get damaged, uh, cause a skin cancer, and so forth. Okay, you got that? All right, so what's going on here? Well, here's the situation. The ozone layer over Antarctica gets very thin every year. Is that bad? Yes, that's bad. 
look at this animation. Here you can see Antarctica on the South Pole, and the blue area shows that there's a hole in the layer in the part just above the Antarctica. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if you have a hole in the ozone layer, then more ultraviolet light can get through, and more plants and other life can get damaged, and more skin cancer can happen. And that's not good. So what causes this hole in the ozone layer? I guess you guessed it, it's humans. Now what did we do? Well, we used spray cans and we used refrigerators that have special gases in them called CFCs. Now, these days we don't use CFCs anymore. But that doesn't mean that the hole in the ozone layer is gone. In fact, they just discovered a new little hole above the North Pole. So we really need to be careful not ever using that those CFCs again. And the effect of not using CFCs will take a long time for the ozone layer to heal. So I'm hoping that the ozone layer will recover soon. All right, let's talk about a second problem. It's called acid rain, zure regen. That sounds scary, and it is. So let's talk about that. Now the situation is that fuels in cars and airplanes contain a chemical called sulfur in Nederlands zwavel. All right. So sulfur in the fuels causes the you know causes acid gas to develop. And that acid gas, surgas, gets up into the atmosphere. And so here you can see the cars. They make sulfur and sulfur gases get into the atmosphere. And then when it starts to rain, the rain starts containing all those acid gases. And it rains down on the planet in the form of acid rain. That's not cool. Why? Because it damages trees, you can see it over here, and it can also damage buildings. You can see that the uh, statues uh, over here, the sculptures, it seems like they're molten away somehow. And that is because of acid rain. And But it also damages living things in lakes and rivers. All right, now for the third and last problem, carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide by itself is okay. It's not a problem. It's a good gas. Remember, you and I breathe it out, and then plants breathe it in, and then plants make oxygen for us to breathe. So that's really nice. And you can see that happening over here. All the carbon dioxide from the trees goes into the atmosphere. All the carbon dioxide from the humans and other living things, I'm sorry, goes to the atmosphere, and then carbon dioxide goes back to the trees. So it's really nice, no problem there. It's a normal natural gas in the atmosphere. Humans breathe it out and plants breathe it in, but there's extra CO2 coming into the atmosphere by what? Well, burning coal, oil, and gasoline. And plants cannot breathe all of this in. So too much carbon dioxide is now getting into the atmosphere. Now, if trees cannot breathe all of this in anymore, and trees are also getting to be cut down, so we have too much CO2. Too. Nobody can help that. So what does the extra CO2 do? Well, normally, when we have CO2 in our air, which is okay, that keeps the earth warm. It kind of acts like a blanket, or if you will, a glass house. We call that a greenhouse in English. And in Dutch we call it uh, een kas, een kas voor groenten en planten die je dan onder dat glazen dak zet. So that is really nice. That is what normal CO2 does. It just keeps the air warm on Earth. But the extra CO2 makes the air even warmer. And that is because of the following. Normally, when sunlight comes in, Part of that sunlight is reflected back into the atmosphere and part of that sunlight stays on Earth in the form of warmth. And that's really nice. 
But if too much carbon dioxide stays around the Earth, then sunlight comes in, and less and less warmth goes out. So the CO2 kind of keeps the heat on Earth. Too much heat on Earth, and that means the Earth's average temperature rises. It becomes too hot. And this is called global warming, the upwarming from the Earth. So normal CO2 keeps the Earth warm. Too much CO2 makes the Earth even warmer. So that means gas from pollution traps the heat from the sun, and the Earth is just like being in a greenhouse. It stays really warm, and the heat cannot go out. All right, now it's time for the summary. So this is a good time for you to grab your notebook and a pen, and now and then pause the video and copy what you see next, because that will really help you on your test. So let's dive into the summary. Summary number one: the atmosphere has layers of air. One of those layers is called the ozone layer, and there is a hole in this ozone layer that causes more and more ultraviolet radiation to get. On Earth to get to every living thing on Earth, and that can damage plants and it can cause skin cancer. Now, what caused this hole? It is caused by the CFCs in spray cans and in refrigerators. Now, modern-day spray cans and modern-day refrigerators don't have CFCs anymore, but we used to have them, and those CFCs. Have still damaged the ozone layer, and it takes a long time for the ozone to recover back. Summary number two. There's fuels. Some of those fuels contain sulfur, and sulfur can turn into acid rain. Now, when acid rain rains down on Earth, it can damage the trees, it can damage buildings, and it can damage all kinds of living things in lakes and rivers. Summary number three: coal and gas. Coal and gas contain carbon dioxide, and when we burn it, carbon dioxide gets into the atmosphere. So we have too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, not just from humans and animals breathing it out, but also from fuels and gases. What does it do? Well, the Earth becomes too hot, and we call this global warming. Okay, I hope you copied all that down. Let's talk about your homework. First of all, there's a worksheet. It is called Consequences Worksheet 4.4.1. Go ahead and print that and answer the questions. And if you do not have a printer, just write down all the answers in a Word document and send it over to your teacher. Besides the worksheet, there's also the textbook questions on page 59. Answer questions one till six in a Word document. Send it to your teacher, and then answer question workbook page 29. Do assignments one, two, and three, and also make a photo, copy paste it in a Word document, send it to your teacher. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please rewatch this video again, and don't forget to write down the summary. Have a wonderful day. Bye.